Fear of failure of or fear of change gets me immobilized. How can I change it? Fear of change does what? Or fear of failure. Mm. It makes me immobilized. How do I change it? Immobilized for one who is, you, who is seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility. For him there is no failure. For one who is looking at the simple events of this life itself as the goal of life, for him there is failure and success. If you are just seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, if you have a good deal, you use that for your well-being. If you have a bad deal, you use that for your well-being. The economy was on the boom, when every fool could be successful. No. It didn't take much. When the economy is on the boom, everybody gets carried, isn't it? Now there has been a meltdown. Now it takes something else to be successful. <laughs> so, when the economy was on the boom, you could have brought a certain dispassion towards the money that's flowing in. Now the economy is down, the taps are all closed up. It's time to come, meditate, walk in the mountains. <laughs> There's a lot of time. There's a lot of time on your hands, isn't it? When there was money, it took away your time and life. Now the taps are closed, lots of time, this is the time. So it doesn't matter what the hell happens. It doesn't matter what the hell happens with your life. If you are seeing this life only as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, then whatever the situation, it is beautiful and very useful, very, very useful. Once there was a farmer like you, who was tired of various natural factors ruling his… the quality of his uh, crop. So one day he called Shiva. It was a wild card entry. So he found excess and Shiva said, what? He said, I'm tired of all the natural nonsense happening. Obviously you're not a farmer. I know from history that you were a hunter. You were not a farmer. <laughs> you don't know what it means to farm. Why don't you leave the nature in my hands? I'm a farmer. I know when it should rain, I know when there should be sunlight, I know when there should be wind, I know what… everything. You don't know because you're just a hunter and you're a crazy ascetic. You're definitely not a good farmer. The wrong times it's raining, at wrong times things are happening. You leave it to me. Shiva was one of those moods, he said, okay, nature is in your hands. Then the farmer planted his crop, planted a maize crop, rain, poke the land and see, okay, it's soaked up to six inches, stop. Then plough it, plant it, wait for two days. Rain, mm. sunlight, today I'm working in the field, cloud. <laughs> so everything just happened the way he wanted. A beautiful maize crop came. He was overjoyed, see, it's good. Nature should be in farmer's hands. And then when the time to harvest came, 
he wanted to see because none of the birds were coming, he was surprised because that also he said, no birds, no birds. Then he went and opened and saw nice big everything, but you opened and saw no grain inside. Then he thought, what the hell is this? What did I do wrong? Then he couldn't figure out because rain, water, sunshine, everything he managed properly. Then again he went back to Shiva. But he was in this condition. He waited for many years for him to open his eyes. By the time his… you know these many years, the fields and the family, everything went to… But he wanted to know the answer, what went wrong? His farmer first. Then when Shiva opened his eyes, he asked, I did everything right but there is no grain. Did you sabotage my crop? Shiva said, I've been watching. You were doing… you were in charge so I didn't want to interfere. The rain was great, the sunshine was great, everything was fine. But you stopped all the winds. I used to always send fierce winds which would threaten your crop. But because the plants felt pushed and threatened, they put their roots deeper into the earth. So grain happened. Now you have great maize crop. No maize? So various situations in your life, either you can use it to make yourself stronger and better or you can sit and cry. This is the choice you have, everything. It doesn't matter what happens. The most horrific event happened in your life, that also can be used for your growth and your well-being. If only if you have clearly seen the small events of your life. When I say small events, I mean your business, your marriage, your children, all those big things. <laughs> all these things are just a stepping stone. So, the fear of failure. Failure is bad enough, fear is adding spice to it, isn't it? <laughs> Success happens to you not because you desire it, because you earn it. Everybody desires it. It comes only if you're capable of it. No, no, I'm very capable but… that's the but. <laughs> I'm very capable, I was doing very well five years ago but now… Yes, but now situations have changed and you don't know how to deal with it. That's all it means. If you have set a larger goal for yourself, then just eating, breeding, earning a living, if you've set a larger goal for yourself, all these things are fine. So wherever the hell we go, whatever the hell happens, this is how we will be. Because success and failure is not in the volumes of money flowing into your life, Success and failure is not dependent upon the recognition that you're finding in the world. You're successful with life if you know how to walk with joy through hell. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is an idea because success is also a stupid idea. Your idea, what is success and what is failure, isn't it? Instead of trying to change the world, change your idea. Isn't it easier? If you just change your idea of success and failure, everything is great, isn't it? If you were a beggar on the street, today, if you could walk into the restaurant, eat a masala dosa, 
and pay ten rupees bill, this would be the height, the peak of your success. Isn't it so? So, you've gotten trapped in social situations and it is not even your idea. Why am I crediting you with this? It is somebody's idea <laughs> of what is success, isn't it? Don't become a slave to somebody's idea. At least have your own idea. You have no idea of your own. Don't deceive yourself. Every idea, every thought, every emotion, every value that you have is picked up from somewhere and it rules you from within. It rules you from within. Your religion, your society, your culture has trained you to believe that this is it. So first, the first and foremost success is that you are not a slave to anybody's idea. This is success. Whatever the situation of life, you're alive means you're successful, isn't it? <laughs> no? Hmm? This is success, you're alive. You don't know the value of life. <laughs> You're crying about the share market. <laughs> you do not know the value of life. Because the damn graph is going up and down, you want to die? No, no, but I lost so much money. There is no such thing. These are all social things. These are not existential things. We created the society for our well-being, not to take our lives, yes? You created your family, your social structure and every other damn thing for your well-being, not to take your life, isn't it? Now every damn thing can take your life. Don't make things that you create things that human beings create larger than your life, that is the basis of your suffering. You are not interested in the creator's creation, so magnificent. You are enamored by petty things, so you have to suffer. If you don't suffer, how? What is the value of enlightenment? <laughs> you have to suffer. If Ignorance doesn't bring suffering to you. Why would you seek enlightenment? What, is, what would be the value? Somebody said ignorance is bliss. They've always been selling ignorance, of course. No, if you're in ignorance, you must suffer. This is not my wish, this is the way of life whether you like it or you don't like it, that's the way it happens.